Um, what else is there? Of course, you know yourself the the match day toilets. You know you have to. You, yeah, every like every every footballer does it. Like I, I haven't met. Do you do, you do, do it in the change room or do you do it at the hotel? No, okay, so, so I'll do it. I, I always do it. So I'll do it as before I have a shower okay. in the morning. So that's the one in the house. And then when I go to the change room, I do one like. So what I'll do is I'll get changed. Then after I get changed, I'll go to the toilet. Okay. And then I'll come back and I'll relax. And then that's it, just the two. Uh, <laughs> yes, sir. I'm your host, Leroy, and welcome back to The Insight. But before we start, could you make sure you like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for any new content that will be coming your way very soon. But without further ado, enjoy the pod. So yeah, you progress, you're doing well at Dunstable, and then you get the move to Hartlepool. How was how was that? How did that feel? Having experienced all you experienced before, obviously it was a step in the right direction. Obviously, the Hartlepool thing for me was like it was a great, it was great, it was great for me like to have gone from Dunstable to to Hartlepool because obviously Hartlepool is, is national league, and they're, they're a good side as well. So when I heard about that coming about. I, I was very happy about that. I was, I was very, I was very happy to to have signed for them, especially because I said they're a good team, and in terms of how they take care of players, how they take care of the team, I can't complain about that. So when I heard about that news coming around, for me, I was excited. That it, it was a, it was a great challenge for me. It was it was, a, it was going to be a new challenge as well because look at any team I've played in, I've been the youngest player on the pitch, still am. So. It's that bit of pressure, but if you live up to the pressure, it's, it's, it looks good on you. Yeah, how do you deal with the pressure? You know, I've always said, and um, for me, it's not, I, I, especially going, growing up the way I did and in terms of football-wise and always being put under pressure of you need to perform. And I've never really thought of other people's opinions. So, like, even nowadays, that. Like, um, like, of course, fans are very important, but fans, as you know, most of the time, they may be thinking things off of the emotions. Yeah. So you could have, you know, as a footballer, you could have seven good games and you have one bad game. After that bad game, the fans are saying, you're rubbish uh, yeah. after you've played seven good games. So they, they think off emotions, which is it's fine because, as I said, that fans, like, fans, they put their all into supporting a club. So it's understandable. Why they do, they have feelings like that, but for me it's like honestly, I'm like I, I don't really care about people's opinions. Like, that's I, it's, not, it's just something I don't really I don't I don't pay mind to. My opinion is my my dad in my opinion is the most important opinions to me, and I'm I'm not one that I'm not a player that can't self reflect on myself. Like, I know when I played bad. I know when I played good. I don't need other people to tell. I don't need fans or a, a manager or even my dad to tell me I played good or I played bad. I know myself, but it's like for me, it's just the pressure I put on myself is more important than any pressure anybody else puts on me. So that's the pre- that's the only reason. Like for example, before a game, if I feel nervous, that's the only reason why I feel nervous because I know what I can do. So if I don't live up to what I know I can do, that's when I feel like I've let myself down at the end of the game. Not not everybody, of course, like let the team down as well. But the, my first thought is, you knew that you could perform well and you didn't. So because you haven't performed well, that's the reason of like I'm feeling down and I'm feeling upset about it. So yeah, as I said, I think the pressure for me is not about the pressure on the outside. It's about the pressure, what pressure I put on myself. Okay. Um, so let's talk about game prep. How do you prepare for a game to not allow yourself to feel as nervous or is that a usual thing? I think... I think it's good to be nervous. Obviously, like to certain players, I know that they're not nervous at all, and that's there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that at the end of the day. But I, for me, I feel like it's good to be nervous because, as I said, I'm only feeling nervous because the pressure I put myself of I want to perform well for myself. So when I'm feeling nervous, it's like I I wouldn't say I really have a match. Like I wouldn't say I have something that I do to get myself out of feeling nervous. Of course, like for me, I'm I'm very um specific on certain areas but not every area so for example I, I need to be very very hydrated before I play like very hydrated 
Yeah. It's just I, I don't know what it is like, like especially recently. I've been doing it for the last couple of years, but I've noticed I do a lot more now. Like before a game, I might have to drink like four or five bottles of water. So like uh, what? Like in what succession though? So like let's say okay, so I'll I'll go, I'll go into the change room. Uh, with, like so when let's say meet time is half one, I'll go into change room half one and I'll put two bottles in my area, and I'll drink the two bottles before I go out to warm up, yeah. and then. In warm up, let's say I'll have one bottle, and then I'll come back in, and then in that like fifteen minutes, I'll try like scoop in fives a push, but I'll try scooping another uh, four, another four bottles, so like a four four before I go out, just so I'm hydrated. But obviously before me time, I'm having like two three bottles in the, in in my in my room as well, just to make sure. Yeah, so like for me, yeah, I need to be proper hydrated. And um, what else is there? of course you know yourself to the match day toilet <laughs> you know you have to you yeah every like every every footballer does it like i, I haven't met do you do you do it in the change room or do you do it at the hotel fam? No, okay so, so i'll do it I, I always do it so i'll do it as before i have a shower okay. in the morning so that's the one in the house and then when i go to the change room i do one like so what i'll do is i'll get changed then after i get changed i'll go to the toilet now I'll come back and I'll relax. And then that's it, just the two. Uh, oh my gosh. But I think I think it's neat. I think that might take out some of the nerves. Possibly, yeah. Possibly. For some people at least. No, possibly. Obviously, as I said, like it's it's good nerves. Nerves and for me, I feel like it's good to have nerves. I feel like you're only nervous for the right reasons at the end of the day. But as I said, that's the, I'll say that's the only two things that I see myself doing every game that I need to do every game. The hydration thing and uh, the other thing, of course, like I do my prayers in the change room and things like that. And obviously, I'll do my prayers for the game and, all, and, and things like that just to like calm me down and things, a quick conversation with God. But that's just natural anyway. No, for sure. What tunes are you, are you banging before the game? Because I think I was chatting to uh, Tyreek. One of my boys, he plays for Bristol. Tyreek Banks. Yeah, I know, I know. That's, yeah. So he obviously is mellow side. Like, yeah. So mellow tunes, what are you banging? So obviously, if I'm in my room, I'll be banging that. So as soon as I wake up, I play any type of genre. Yeah. Then when I'm having a shower and I'm chilling, I'm getting changed, I play gospel music just to like calm it down a little bit. Just to put me in like a, in a soothing mood because... I, 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 I'll be honest with you. I think a lot more about. I think a lot more about like how I'll be a lot more nervous in the room than I'll be in the change room. Okay, yeah, I heard that. Just because I have so much time to think in the room, whereas when I'm in the change room, I don't really have that much time to think. But most times, players are speaking to you. Blah, blah, blah. When you're in the room, you're by yourself. So obviously, I just listen to a bit of gospel, soothe myself down. And if we're in the change room, what I used to do, obviously, I don't do it now. What I used to, I, I would put my headphones and I listen to my own music. And if I'm listening to my own music in the change room, then that's what I'm listening to. I'd like it has to be an offbeat type of tune. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be old school R&B. It could be rap. It could be drill. It could be hip hop. It could be pop. Anything, but it needs to be upbeat. It needs to be something that puts me in a certain mood. But then my last one before going out is um, I need to listen to Meek Mill, Cold Hearted Part Two. <laughs> I need to listen to that. I need that. You're getting ready for war in it. <laughs> Uh, at least, at least, I need to listen to that. No, Just because of like the the, the 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 way he's speaking in it, it, it brings motivation into me. Yeah, I, I hear. That. I like that. I like that. I like that. I think there's like a there's a method. I think it's much needed. Consistency helps for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. For sure. Um. So yeah. Obviously, how was your time at Hartley, Paul, man? No, it was good. Like I can't complain. It was good. As soon as I came in, I was playing. Um, the gap at the time was Matthew Bates, and he's the one that signed me. And as I said, like in terms of managers, how much managers have helped me, he helped me a lot as a player. Um, he trusted in me, and as I was young, quite then, I was, I was young back then, and I was eighteen at the time. Signed when I was eighteen. And when I signed, I was quite immature as a player then. I was still making mistakes at that level but he trusted me he put trust in me and he kept playing me so I enjoyed every bit every bit of that um, 
I kept playing. I played. I played the majority. I think I've ended up playing um something like sixty three games or something like that for Hartlepool in a year and a half. So it wasn't too bad. It, it, it was decent, but it, it it did teach me a lot. As I said, the Dunstable side of the defending bit and then Hartlepool as well. So it did yeah teach me a lot about the defensive side as well. Yeah, that's good, man. Obviously. Oh, the great thing about social media is even when I was in America, I was still watching games and keeping up the scores. I see, obviously, you added the, the goals that you had back in Ireland to your game. How, how was, I see you smiling. How, how was that feeling? How, how, how do, you, do you, okay, question. Do you feel better when you score or make like a good tackle at the back? Because that's, we're going to talk about the ones that you're doing at Bolton right now, but let's get <laughs> first to it. How? What's the what's the difference in feeling? I don't know. I think it it feels to say like a match winning tackle. I'll take a match winning tackle over over a goal any day of the week because for me it's like for me it's, it's funny saying this, but it makes me feel good knowing that the striker thinks he's just about he's going to score this. Like I'm definitely going to get a goal here, and your hopes go up that high. And I, and I pull it back down. For me, that 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 makes me feel good. And at the same time, knowing that you've just stopped the goal going into your net, that makes me feel great as well. So it's like, yeah, of course the goal is like the goal is amazing, but because I'm a defender, no one really expects me to score a goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas people expect me to put my body on the line. So that for me feels good. Have you has your defendant always been put your body on the line or has it progressed as the time has gone? Um, no, I definitely progressed. I think, obviously, as I said, I started as a striker. Then when I went to Watford, I, I, was, I went into centre mid. And after centre mid at, at Watford, um, at MK Dons, I, I got pushed back into a right back. And I think it was like my first year as a right back in the scholar. That's when it was a thing of, yeah, because I'm a defender now, I want to put my body on the line and things like that. So yeah, ever since then it's just been a thing of yeah, like if, if I can do a crunching tackle, if I can block the ball with my face and things like that, I'll, I'll do it. I hear that, I hear that. So obviously you've done very well at Hartley Paul. Now you've got to move to Luton. How was that feeling? No, it was great. Obviously, uh, all the hard work that I, that I put in at Hartley Paul, the games that I was playing, and the performances that I was I was playing. It ended up coming off, but I remember saying to my dad and my mom the day that I signed, I was like, "Unfortunately, this is football that I can't. I'm not going to be too happy because I have training the next day. So the day that I signed was a a Monday, I think, <laughs> and I I signed on a Monday night, knowing that I was going to have to wake up early the next day and train. So now that I've signed, my next mindset is okay. Now I need to impress in training. Yeah. So it's like I didn't really." which is always going to happen, I think, in football. I didn't, I, I didn't really enjoy the move that much. I wasn't there leaping with joy. Of course, I was happy the fact that I made the move. But for me, I said to my parents, it was more of a thing of that. The enjoyment was more for you, like to see all the work you've put in and see where it is now, if you get what I mean. So I, I said to them that the, the move was more of a thing for you to enjoy. Obviously, for me, it was happy. I, I was happy about it. And I was happy that the move happened. But I knew I still had, I still have a job to do. Well, that's good, man. Um, so how how was your mentality going to Lewin? Because obviously, the jump from Hartlepool to Lewin is a bigger one. Like, was your mindset, obviously you had to impress, but was your mindset to, I want to impress so I can go play straight away, or was it I knew that I might have to do my time to wait for me? No, obviously, I, I knew that I was going to have to do my time. I knew it was going to be a while before before I played. Um, it was unfortunate for me that the, the manager that had brought me in ended up getting sacked before we uh, came back from the lockdown. But even with the manager come, getting sacked and, and the new gaffer coming in, um, I still knew that I, I'd have to do my time. But don't get me wrong, as a player, I'm always frustrated if I'm not playing. Um, so I, I was never going to be happy with just sitting around and not playing. I've always said um, I don't want to be at a standstill. I don't want to be at a point where I feel like I'm not progressing as a player. So for me, I think that was the most important thing for me is noticing that it's good that I'm getting the experience of playing with experience, training with experienced players every day, but I need the experience of playing games. Like, that's Games is when you improve at the end of the day. So as I said, I knew that I was going to have to buy my time, but 
I just didn't, I wasn't, as any player, I don't think you should ever be happy with just being there. You should always strive for more. So how is the level of football there compared to what you've experienced so far? No, it was different. It was very it was different, as in technically and, and things like that. But as I said, like, um, defensively, I've always had the defensive side of me since Dunstable. So Dunstable and Hartley helped me a lot with the defensive side. So it wasn't something that I went in there and I was afraid to do 1v1 defending against any of the players. It was, but it was more of a thing of maybe on the ball. I wasn't as confident on the ball because of the fact of, as I said, most of the players you're playing with are quite skillful technically. They're quite smart technically. So I think that's a thing of way now you need to get with it. It's not a thing that I couldn't do it. It's just I need to get with it. I need to learn and do it quickly. No, for sure. How, how long would you say it took you to, to catch up to like the pace? Yeah. Um, to the pace, I'd say I'd say a couple of months. Swear, I'd say I'd I'd say like I'd say okay, not a couple of months is too much. I'll say. So I never went in there and I was out of pace. So it, was not, it wouldn't have been a thing that I went in there and when, when I went in there, I couldn't train well because of the fact that I was at. It was, it's the little things of picking the right time to pass and when not to pass. When like, do you, do you get what I mean? And and obviously tight areas, manoeuvring how to pass out of tight areas and things like that. So I wouldn't say it was a long time. I honestly, I wouldn't say it was a long time. I think it was just a couple of training sessions of you just, as I said, you train Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. So you're always training. So you have the quick like sessions of, yeah, you do this. So obviously blah, blah, blah. And then once that happens, you get go get with it. After one, two, three training sessions, you already know what you need to do. Yeah. To be all in or, or, or don't be in at all. Because yeah, yeah. uh, you, you, you know with football, it, it, it takes a lot out of you. It, it does take a lot out of you. So it's, it's either you need to give it your all or don't do it. Because if you, if you give it 50%, it's not going to work. You give it 80%, it's not going to work. Even 95 it ain't going to work. So yeah, it's either you be all in or this is no point of doing it. Yeah.